Her name is Pam Hupp, and her life is like a soap opera, only a little less believable. Accused of one murder, caught up in the middle of another, and there's more. I really hate to say it, wanted money, my mom's worth a half a million that I get when she dies. Today, we've got new details on the troubling death of Pam Hupp's mother, including new toxicology results. But first, Pam's tangled tale starts in 2011. Hupp tells police she drops off her best friend, Betsy Faria, at her home. It was at this house in the St. Louis suburb of Troy that Betsy Faria was murdered and mutilated in the most horrible of ways just two days after Christmas. Betsy's husband, Russ, had returned home that evening to find Betsy dead from dozens of stab wounds, her arms nearly severed. It was a hard night, and I got to see that every time I close my eyes, from now until forever. What do you see? I see her body there and just cut up, you know, and, and the blood. You can't take it back. You can't block it out of your head. It's always there. The medical examiner would ultimately find that Betsy had been stabbed 55 times, and detectives grill Russ for days. God is in this room with us right now, and God knows that I did not do this. They made the decision that I did it and treated me as if I had from day one. And to Russ's horror and disbelief, he is ultimately convicted by a jury and sentenced to life plus 30 years. I was standing there fully believing I was gonna get a not guilty verdict. I could hear my family and, and friends behind me. I couldn't believe I was going to prison. Nor could Chris Hayes, an investigative reporter who had been covering the case from day one for Crime Watch Daily affiliate, KTVI St. Louis. It was shocking. Hayes says he had witnessed how Russ was seemingly railroaded by the police, the prosecution, and Pam Hupp, Betsy's close friend and confidant and the last known person to see her alive. The woman whose testimony just so happened to help convict Betsy Faria's husband for her murder. Pam Hupp's name kept popping up. Hupp had been helping to care for Russ's wife, Betsy, who was suffering from terminal cancer and was actually with her the night of the murder. Hayes tracked down Hupp to ask her about Betsy's death. Betsy doesn't not pick up many calls. Right, so I was she just wondering why she didn't pick up those that I can't answer. Like I told them, I wasn't expecting for police to come to my door that next morning, so I wasn't taking notes. Ann Hupp contradicts herself on what happened when she got to the Faria home in this audio interview with detectives the morning after the murder. Did you go inside? Uh, no. But a major case squad investigator asks Hupp the same question again. So did you ever go actually go inside the house? I did. Well, we just went in. She turned on the hall light. Still more suspicion would fall upon Hupp when it was learned Betsy had removed Russ as the beneficiary of a $150,000 life insurance policy just days before her murder and replaced him with Hupp. Did you know the policy had been changed? I had no idea until the detectives gave me a letter when I was incarcerated in the jail. Russ would eventually get a new trial where he was exonerated and freed after nearly four years in prison. Betsy Faria's daughters would then sue Hupp for the life insurance money. This is Hupp's shocking admission during the case. Did you lie to anybody else that you've spoken to, Ms. Hupp, about what you were going to do with these life insurance proceeds? Possibly. Okay, who else might you have lied to, Ms. Anybody Hupp? that would bug me and bug me and bug me and bug me. Did the detectives bug you and bug you? Yeah. So you might have lied to them? No. They didn't bug me about the proceeds. They never, that wasn't their focus. Did you have a sexual relationship with Betsy Faria? Sexual on what basis? What's sexual to you? Believe it or not, Hupp would win. And the drama between the Faria family and Pam Hupp would finally be over. Or so we thought. Flash forward to the summer. A man is shot dead in Hupp's home in what appears to be an elaborate revenge plot. I could not breathe when I heard that. And we scrambled out to the scene, and ever since, it's just been one domino after another. Hupp reportedly tells police she was sitting in her SUV in the driveway of her home when the man, now lying dead on the floor, had forced his way into the vehicle. The male subject put a knife to Hupp's throat and kept telling her that she was going to take him to the bank. But Hupp tells police she broke free 
ran into the house, grabbed a gun off a nightstand, and shot at him when he chased her into the bedroom. Police say that she emptied her gun. But when cops dig just a little deeper into the dead man's background, they hardly find the typical profile of a would-be killer. The deceased male subject was positively identified by his fingerprints as Louis R. Gumpenberg. The evidence seems to indicate that she hatched a plot to find an innocent victim and to murder this innocent victim in an apparent effort to frame somebody else. And that someone else is? Guess who? Russ Faria. In fact, cops say after luring Gumpenberger to her house and shooting him, Hupp places a telltale note inside the dead man's pocket. The note says something to the effect of, get Russ's money. Hupp is arrested, charged with murder, and her arrest triggers police to re-examine another death. Hupp's mother, Shirley Newman, died when she tumbled through a third floor balcony railing at her retirement apartment in 2013. It would quickly be called an accidental death, police believing the damage to the bars was done during the fall. Well, there were bars removed, tossed, pushed through. People don't fall over those balconies. Adding to the suspicions, according to a police report, Hupp was the last known person to see her mother alive, dropping her off at the facility, reportedly telling the staff her mom wouldn't be down for dinner or breakfast. Newman's body was found the next day. And just four months before the death, while being asked about Betsy Faria, this is what Hupp told police about her mother. I really hate to say it, wanted money, my mom's worth a half a million that I get when she dies. If I really wanted money, there was an easier way than trying to combat somebody that's physically stronger than me. Today, Crime Watch Daily has the new toxicology report done on Hupp's mother, and it's certainly raising more eyebrows. Newman had up to eight times the normal amount of Ambien, which is prescribed for insomnia, in her system at the time of her fatal fall. Dr. Michael Mullins, who did not perform this autopsy, describes what that amount of Ambien could do. The effects I would expect from, from that, uh, that, that concentration, that amount of, of Ambien, would be that that person may be asleep or may be awake and, and, and in a, in a dreamlike state. Hupp herself even talked about the effects of Ambien in a recorded interview with deputies in the Faria case, two years after her mother's death. I'm a lot better than I was. Part of it's the Ambien, and um, that does some real wicked stuff to your memory. It truly, huge blocks. Not even, you just don't even remember. That's, that's stuff, I can get up and do something. My husband would go, you did, but I'm like, yeah, no way. I get up, walk around, whatever. <laughs> I had no idea what it was doing until, you know, my son would complain or, you know, they'd go, you need to get off that stuff <laughs> because you just are doing stuff you don't know you're doing. Even though Newman's death is still being reviewed, cops have not officially reopened the case and it's still listed as an accidental death. As for the murder of Betsy Faria, it may never be solved. The family of Louis Gumpenberger is hoping for a different outcome as Pam Huck sits behind bars facing first-degree murder charges.